All right, we're gonna go ahead and remove the front driver's side panel. Um, cool guy has a really good video on this. He pretty much steps through it, but uh, I think his may be a 78, or maybe it's in the 80s. I'm not sure he has two different Jeeps he's worked on. But uh, anyway, this is an 81 CJ7. Very, very similar setup. Maybe a couple of little tiny differences, but basically the same thing. But uh, again, it seems pretty straightforward. So just looking here, we're gonna have to remove the horn there. So there's gonna have to be a bolt that comes off there. So here's the windshield washer fluid. We're gonna go ahead, and I had already moved this rib before, but I'll go ahead just for illustration purposes, go ahead and pull this out. It's interesting, it comes with four bolt holes, but I only have three holes in my fender. I've got one here, one here, one on this top end, but there's not a hole down here for this uh, bottom right hand side. I went ahead and already rebuilt the um, the pump here. Mine was, I tried the impeller was broken. It's a piece of plastic, but um, I got this straight from Amazon and it fit right in there. It just ties in at the bottom. There's sort of a nut extra filter there that just screws in from the inside, from this top area. So you're gonna need a deep socket to get down in there and, and undo that bolt that's there or that plastic washer or nut, whatever that is. Anyway, so the canister goes in here. Like I said, I've already removed it. So the charcoal canister goes in there. This bracket, here's the charcoal canister bracket. Like I said, I've already removed it. I already sandblasted and powder coated it. So that comes right out. And this part right here, here's a brace right here, uh, brace piece. Again, I've already sandblasted this and pulled it out. I will be powder coating it, but you can see there's gonna be a screw there and a screw there. So it's just held in by, by that bolt, but that just slides right out. Keep track of all your nuts and bolts, make sure everything goes where it's supposed to. And like I said, there's a couple of braces that I'll show in some another video. These go down in there. Um, I actually don't know the orientation right this second, but I have it on another video. It's going to attach into this bolt right here, this down at the bottom, and these two right down there. But yeah, these supports just connect up the firewall to the, uh, to the fender here. So it's just those couple of bolts and nuts. And then there's going to be three bolts over here to the side. You got one, two, three, four. And that should be pretty much it against the firewall. None of this other stuff connects this whole area around here. I think the ICM, the ignition control module, goes in these holes right here. Um, mine has been taken out and already, so I don't have it. So like I said, there's gonna be a couple of clips for this wiring cable. Clip here. A couple of clips, and that goes right inside there. And that goes to the headlights, obviously. And also this turn signal. And then underneath here, you can kind of see that's where one of those support brackets goes there. This is the, the washer fluid bolt holes. And like I said, I did not have one down here. And then there's, and there's an additional one for that support, one of the support braces that's down there. And that's it. You pretty much see there's nothing else over here. There's nothing holding this back end there. That's all open. And then there's bolt there that's connecting it to the radiator. Another bolt there. 
another bolt and uh, I think that is absolutely it and then just got to make sure that this up there for the side side marker light I think that's just a quick twist and it just slides right out Let's start taking this thing apart. All right, these are half inch. We're gonna go ahead and crack them. Hopefully we can get them off there pretty easily. Yeah, not too bad. thing in there. Nope. Cool. All right. Helps when you go the right way. There we go. One down. Two down. Three down. I'll leave this last one in a little bit. Just so when I pull the front off, it doesn't all fall on me. But it's, it's definitely loose. It's a little seam sealer there. Number four. All right, last three. And get that there. Got everything else done over here underneath. I pushed the. Uh, The, uh, the turn signal wire, I just kind of pushed it up there. It was coming over here to the turn signal or the parking light, whatever you want to call it. And I just got these three here. No, these are also half inch. break the bolt.
lost my light there. There you go, there's number one. The other ones are going to be a lot easier. That's a little easier. in there. this out. And I left it in. Alright, there's number four. Alright, here we go. And it's out. And because I think this part is super interesting, let's take a look at is what underneath what's underneath the, uh, the quarter panel there. See, there's a, a nut right there. Three nuts that got pulled out. There's obviously, obviously the side marker light. Kind of just goes right in there. You can see the back of the headlight in there. Nothing else connecting up this fender. That's pretty much it. Easy access to the shocks and the brake line and the steering. And then certainly a really good view of what's underneath here. You can see the clutch. Here's clutch mechanism. Yeah, I need to sandblast that and powder coat that part, but the rest of it's all done. And then here's the three bolt or the four bolt holes. One, two, three, four. And that's again where the three bolts where the charcoal canister holder comes in. And then where that bottom, uh, where that bottom bracket connected up. Anyway, kind of a good view that you don't get real often. Again, like the clutch mechanism, I put an O2 sensor in there for an AFR gauge. And then here's the vent right there that connects up to the charcoal canister. Again, I'll show where the support brackets go in there and there. They connect up to the fender and hold it in. 